A special thanks to these companies for being long-term partners of this channel. Hey everybody. All right, so I'm filming on auto right now. Actually it looks pretty good, which is kind of crazy. Uh, shout out to Sony, Sony A7S III. Apparently this thing's amazing in low light, so I figured I'd film a little bit. I'm in the car, it's late at night. It's kind of like the flu game weekend for me. I'm not feeling super great. I think I must have picked up some sort of seasonal cold, but it's a little early for that. Anyways, driving to Northern Minnesota, we're gonna be checking out some different trails. We're gonna be overlanding, off-roading a bit. We're also gonna be doing some dirt biking and just having a good time. So I'm gonna try and uh, bring you all along for the ride on that, try and vlog it a little bit. And uh, yeah, we'll kind of go from there. So um, if you like this style of content or you want me to film more videos like these in the future, then uh, drop a comment down below letting me know that you like them. Because uh, from the polls I've done in the past, it seems like people more prefer the videos of just installs and more of the technical stuff. But let me know what you think. All right, well, let's keep on driving and get back to it. So been up for a little bit here just made some coffee and uh, I was just gonna show you a little bit around my setup so if you look here I've got just some classic northern Minnesota up here just for a short weekend we're gonna be doing some dirt biking and let me just show you some of the stuff going on with the truck so in the back here I uh, I'll eventually show more of this, but don't have the uh, drawer system anymore. Trying out something different. This is just for a little weekend trip. And uh, we're testing out this Blue Eddy solar panel here that they sent me. And then I've also got this AC50S up here. Testing that out. That charged my phone and ran my little fan up there super well so that worked out and then also got this luno stuff so this bag here i've shown it before but this is for holding your shoes so you just open this up put your shoes in it's actually really nice kept my crocs dry last night outside the truck and as you can see we pulled in here late last night and so unfortunately uh you know it's not super easy to rip down forest roads with the camper so I was doing some mobbing to just go find a camping site in the dark. So turned on all of the lights and just went flying down the trail. And uh, yeah, got pretty muddy. So it was nice having that little bag there to put my shoes on. The rock sliders got caked in like this sandy mud mixture. Shout out C4. So yeah um other things that luno sent me that i actually really like is these these window screens they're pretty inexpensive and they're better than the other ones i had on amazon and they are pretty dense which i really like so they kind of give like a tinting effect almost like a curtain and they allow a lot of air still through and i don't know what it is but last night like there was almost no moisture on any of my windows so I didn't use any Reflectix, so maybe that's partially why, but yeah, last night was pretty good sleeping experience for the most part. Uh, the other thing that Luno sent me that I've really been enjoying is this privacy curtain made by Luno. And all you do is you, it's got a big band on it and you just pinch it in the door on either side. And then there's two curtains and then they, uh, they hold together with magnets here so you can like pull them apart and then they slide on this little on this little cord across and then you know you just have to push them together with their magnets but they're pretty sweet i think i should have set it just a little bit higher that's probably what i'll do tonight but that worked really well for actually providing some privacy while sleeping and then in the morning it kind of acts to actually keep some of the sun out which is really nice so like I said on the drive up here, it's kind of like the flu game for me, um, kind of camping while sick. And uh, I didn't know how it was gonna go last night sleeping in the rig, but surprisingly I slept pretty well. I mean, I didn't sleep super great the night before, 
at home, but last night I slept okay. I've been using this big Agnes pad. I don't actually have a single bed mattress yet, and so I've just been using this backpacking mattress that I have. And this is shockingly comfortable. I don't wanna necessarily say it, but I think that this might be more comfortable than my Exped Duo mattress that I have that's four inches thick as well. I don't know what they've done to this sleeping pad, but it's just so comfortable. Then got a mountain hardware sleeping bag, and then I just packed some of my pillows and stuff, trying to elevate my head a little bit. And then I've been testing out the AC50S, which worked really well last night. So um, this I leveled out by just putting my duffel bag under there. <laughs> it just fits. Remove the remove the butt portion of the seat here, and then just put my bag in there. And then in the rear, it's nothing fancy. I just used some scrap plywood to build a little leveler. It's three pieces of plywood uh, just stacked on each other. Got some little feet behind here. You can see this, so there's a foot there, a foot in the middle, and a foot on the other side. And then my torque wrench in this bag turned out to be the right height, so I just kind of stacked those at the very foot for now. So I needed a setup to to get everything going, and I got it done before leaving this weekend for the trip. So yeah, that's that's basically the sleeping setup, and it was honestly pretty comfortable. So thank you, Luno, for sending all those different accessories. Those kind of make or break sleeping in your car sometimes if you can't keep it dark enough or you can't ventilate it properly then you're gonna kind of have a bad time so that's pretty nice to use that stuff I also figured you know I just showed you the camping setup but my truck continually changes so maybe I'll just kind of whip around and show some modifications on it that I've been doing but maybe I should do an official walk around to kind of show everything uh, but so far We've got the, uh, back here, we've got the C4 ladder. I put that on recently. You can kind of see it up there. I had to replace these struts. Um, then I'm running 285, 75, 17 Toyo Open Country AT3s on Relation Race Wheels. Those are the RR6 hybrid beadlocks. I've got black anodized beadlock rings, C4 sliders, Kamek awning. This thing's actually super awesome deploys in like 20 seconds or 10 seconds and you're good to go. I've got a video of that on my channel. Just got the roof rack installed. That is the Sherpa Crestone. Most people are running that these days. Crazy good rack. Got my light bar up there up top. Diodynamic SS57 pod crosslink. Action tracks, shout out KC. He gave me a set of those. He's out of Kansas City. They are awesome, American made. C4 low pro front bumper, got, got a Badlands 12K synthetic winch and Diodynamics 30 inch light bar, three inch SS3 pods, SS3 pods on the A pillars. Uh, whole lift kit is Dobinson's MRR. Got about four inches in the front and about six inches in the rear and terrible drive shaft angles right now it's rated for a lot of weight in the front and the rear and it doesn't have it so it stands quite tall but we don't have the armor yet so there's all the backlights my favorite part about the truck i'm a big fan of the lighting what else uh the front headlights are gtr lighting those are pretty awesome, I really like those. These little magnets, they're made by Tactilian. I've got a discount code for them, O-V-L-D-E-N-G. Same with this right here, Tactilian. They're an awesome company. They help uh, wounded veterans, if I remember correctly. Tail lights are Morimoto. Big fan of those, I think they look really killer. And that's a little, a little bit better look at the roof rack 
yeah, just figured I'd do a little rig walk around, kind of show you some of the stuff, but I'll get into all the nitty gritty details in a legit walk around video in the future. But anyways. All right, so just a little bit of day two uh, reflection. I have slept in here two nights now with the super makeshift setup and it honestly turned out really well. The window screens were a huge plus. They definitely tint the windows and still provide ventilation, which I really liked. We had this privacy curtain in here the whole time, which I was also a huge fan of. Uh, it blocked the light incredibly well. And now that I've got these molly panels in here, uh, they block the light as well. So it's kind of just the back window that didn't really have much light blocked. You can see over there, the screen is on that window as well. I never would roll the windows down all the way. I just kind of crack them a couple inches at the top. I had my bed set up here on the 60% seat side. And then in here, I was running the Blue Eddy AC50S. This battery is a 500 watt hour, 300 watt peak battery. Does a little bit of DC, a little bit of AC, as you can see. And I was running this little fan up here, as well as my phone charger every night, and just powering other random little electronic stuff like charging my camera, stuff like that. If we can get the screen to turn on here, use like 20% of the battery. So this thing's kind of a powerhouse if you just got basic stuff to charge. If you're trying to do more than that, you know, maybe you have to figure out a way to. Uh, if you've got to charge more than that, you may need a little bit more storage space. My fridge is a little bit big to run off of this, but I think a smaller fridge you could easily run on a weekend trip with this little battery. If we walk around to the back here, I actually hauled along a little bit of camping stuff, just some tools, and then my solar panels here because I didn't know what exactly I would need. I'm out here dirt biking and so I just figured I would bring this stuff along in case I needed it. So in the future, my thought is, is like the 60% side and over can be the bed. And then on this side, I can sneak my fridge here because all that like 40% seat space up there was awesome, kind of like a little nightstand. So this worked really sweet. The nice thing too is, is I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and I'll show you all, but all of this will just kind of pack nicely up on top of my shelf. That's a great place to store a bunch of the bedding when uh, I'm not sleeping in the truck. So yeah, pretty sweet setup. I like the privacy curtain. I, I just wanted to give my thoughts one last time after sleeping two nights in here this fall weekend in Minnesota. And uh, yeah, those little Luno things really helped a lot. Every night I would wake up and there would be dew on top of this bag. And so throwing my Crocs in here was great so that they weren't wet at all when I would wake up in the morning. So shoe bag, the screens, and this little privacy curtain, in my opinion, are kind of a must. I'm just gonna keep them in my rig at all times because they really come in handy. And, you know, I don't feel too bad if they get ruined at some point, but they're super nice to have around. Got the dirt bikes all loaded up. Up here in Northern Minnesota, we've got way more dirt bike and four wheeling trails than we actually have overlanding trails. So we're always hitting them with dirt bikes. 250X. That's the, uh, that's the killer Honda style sized dirt bike that we found is really good for doing trails up here. There's nothing too gnarly. It's not like motocross. So we're just up here mobbing trails. Campsite was really pretty. Had the Forerunner set up here most of the weekend, except for when it was raining and I was just driving around. Action tracks were great to keep me leveled. Yeah, we took the Forerunner into town to grab some pizza, I think, at a local bar, but aspens and birch trees all around, spruce and evergreens. Northern Minnesota is super pretty. We've got a lot of amazing camping and forest roads. Just no, not too many technical trails, but that's okay. It's really pretty out here, and uh, I was glad I was able to get out here and uh, enjoy the fall weather a bit before it starts to get really cold here in the Midwest. All right, well, we've for the most part gotten packed up and I didn't do a ton to show the whole entire trip this weekend, but I at least wanted to show some of it. So the, the truck got really muddy. 
I dirt biked during the day when it was a lot less rainy, but then the day that it was raining a lot, I decided to take the Forerunner and mob around, and it was a lot of fun. There was a lot of mud. The Forerunner got pretty dirty. Up here in Minnesota, we don't have tons of rocks, so didn't really have any clearance issues. Just maybe I uh, got stuck a couple times or could have gotten stuck, but I didn't test anything too crazy. The uh, rig is very dirty though, that's gonna be fun to clean. The Kamek awning was awesome. Got to test it in the wind some, and it was honestly pretty impressive how much it stayed just fine in the wind. It dries off really quickly too, which I liked. Um, yeah, overall, still really happy with this awning, and I think it looks great on the side of the roof rack there. Those brackets also were awesome. The thing that I never thought about is awnings are a prime target for big branches. So not only do you have to worry about your awning getting ripped off just cruising down the road, but if you catch a big branch on the end of that awning and you got a wimpy little bracket, it might bend the snot out of your rack or, or the bracket, you know, it kind of depends on how you have it hooked up. So you want to be kind of careful because I bet that's a situation where a big branch or small tree can really ding up that stuff. So. No problems with these Sherpa brackets though. They are ridiculously burly. So just getting the truck packed up here. Gotta just put my tripod away and a couple of my other little things. Got the uh, AC50S Blue Eddy charged up a bit. I charged it like 20% off solar here in the last hour. And yeah, I just gotta back off the action tracks. Toss them in the truck. And I think uh, this weekend is gonna be a wrap, so. I don't have the little pin set up nicely on my roof rack like I did on my old roof rack that I built. So I've got to order those little circular bracket things that I showed you all in that last video so I can get the max tracks to actually mount on the roof. Kind of dirty. Might have to vacuum the truck later anyways. So that's, uh, it is what it is, but don't love loading up dirty action tracks or traction boards because it just gets everything else muddy. But is what it is. That's why I really like mounting them on the roof. It's not just to look cool, but you can actually keep them up there. So if they're dirty or wet, they're just out of your rig. I don't have that luxury like a truck where I can just toss them in the bed, but check this out. I want to show you something. Truck is running right now. Sun isn't setting yet, but look at that. All the DRLs lit up like that. Gosh, trucks really come a long way. Gonna be doing another walk around video soon, but even just comparing the truck, how it looks now to how it looked a year ago, it looks so sweet. I'm really stoked with how the truck has come along. So got the, the Sherpa rack up there, all the DRLs looking killer. So thank you so much for following along. Tried to kind of vlog this weekend a little bit, just kind of share some of the things as I was camping. I don't know how to film dirt biking, in an exciting sort of cinematic way that's not going to terribly bore everyone else that's riding with me but if you got any suggestions for me leave them in the comments below but other than that thank you so much for watching i'll catch you all in the next video peace <laughs>